And we're back. <laughs> Hello, all my little roaches out there. Come on out from under the cupboards. Come on out from under the fridge. <laughs> Be wary of the orc and man for another day, but welcome to another episode of the Josh Potter Show. I am, of course, Josh Potter, and I am out on the road. Thank you if you came to Milwaukee. I haven't been able to talk to you since Milwaukee. Thank you for coming. I appreciate all the people that came out. So many roaches coming out to the Milwaukee Improv. Also, if you were in Cleveland and said what's up, say uh, I'm saying thank you to that as well. I'm actually leaving uh, for that show, those shows tomorrow as of this taping and such. But then we have things. If you are listening to this on the day it comes out, Tuesday, then tomorrow night, I will be at Zany's in Nashville. Come on out to that show. And then on the 30th, we've got the DC Improv. And then Thanksgiving weekend, I return home to where the roach was born. I go to Helium Comedy Club in Buffalo. All those tickets can be found on my Instagram, at Josh underscore Potter, or up on my Twitter, at J underscore Potter. And you can also watch me play baseball and shotgun beers on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Josh underscore Potter. And with me today, another guest I'm excited to have podcast is one of my favorites to do from the podcast shank it's sarah wan shank how are you hi i'm good i'm happy to be here happy to be here with the daddy roach that's me roach daddy tell everybody where they can find you where they can see you you can find me at princess shank on instagram and twitter that's princess like normal and then another s-h-e-n-k check out my podcast shank it's on itunes spotify youtube for video and I uh, have all kinds of shows coming up. September 29th, I will be headlining at American Comedy Co. in San Diego. Ooh, wee. Yeah, and I'll be in Texas for Skank Fest. Ooh. 5th through the 7th. I'll also be headlining at Creek and Cave Austin with Kimberly Congman November 3rd. And I will be on Kill Tony November 1st with Kimberly Congman as well. And then the Desplot, Desplot Secret Show November 4th, Vulcan Gasco. Wow, we that's some fun stuff. Yeah, Skank Fest. I might go. I'm not on you the show, go. but I might go. You should definitely we'll see how uh, the shows like round out. Lewis gave me the uh, you should coming out. Yeah, you, you know? should. So I think I'm gonna try and do that. It's so. a fun hang. Yeah, for sure. Look, I mean, I was like sad that I wasn't uh, going, so I was like, ah, I want to go hang out. So I might go hang out. Okay. Uh, that'll be exciting. And are you doing a podcast with Kim? I am. I'm so, I started a new pod with Kim. It's called Thicky Kimmy and Shank. Shank. <laughs> I'm Which like one very are you? No. <laughs> I'm Thicky Kimmy. Um, no, yeah. And so we just recorded the first episode, and we're just working on the album artwork for that as well. So stay tuned for that. Cause it's about to drop. We just got to get everything all sorted, like the intro song and the, you know how it is when you first set up a of pod. Of course. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I mean, I'm still getting set up, and it's been fucking. A year almost. Feels like you're always just getting set up to <laughs> yeah. podcast. Like people don't realize how much goes into it. I cannot tell you how like difficult it's been getting comfortable through all the muck and mire of trying to just keep a certain level of like quality and things like that. But hey, we're here, we're surviving as long as I have one of these and one of those. And a person <laughs> Mike who and a puts camera. A, yeah, and a person <laughs> who can put them all together, Kirsten, thank you. Uh, as long as I have those things. I think I'll be okay, but I'm excited for your new podcast. If it's anything like your other podcast, uh, I mean, hey, I always get a buzz every time I do your podcast. I love it. You never leave Shank without getting a buzz. I love having you on my podcast because you're my favorite person to just riff with. Yeah, no, it's exciting. I know, and I, I said when I do your podcast, it's so free and so like, I love it because I just show up, I get a buzz, and we just like shoot the shit. And meanwhile, I got all these papers over here. I'm like, I got a game we're going to play. <laughs> I got all this nonsense. Yeah, no, but that's good. Everyone's yeah, no. pod is different. I mean, also, it's a lot of uh, self. It's a lot of like getting past your own issues when you have a podcast. What do you mean? Where you're like, I just got to do it. It's like, j- just do it. Oh my Try God, not yeah. to overthink it. There's so much overthinking that people don't know That's about. the problem with having it be one hour a week. I wish it could be like a radio show where you're doing like four hours a day, and then it's less precious. Totally. You can just screw around, and then like if you fuck up something, you get to come back to it. 
the next day or you don't even have to like acknowledge it ever happened you're already moved on it's been so many so much content since then this one you're like you put out an episode and that you have to sit in that hour for like yeah, a week. Yeah, it's like sitting in your shitty diaper for a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're, you're like, like, I shat myself and someone will come change me eventually. <laughs> That's what it feels like. I'm yeah, like, what is happening? I'm going to get fucking sores and I'm going to get rashes and shit but that's okay i mean yeah. that's the shitty part about it it's like you know if you put something out that blows you're like well great and you get instant feedback yeah and then you have to like live with it you're like well hopefully they come back next next time around well, hopefully they like it when i talk about ass play because <laughs> my mom doesn't <laughs> oh is, is that the instant feedback you're getting your mom you didn't tell my me that mom. your mom and stuff like comments on your podcast my mom comments on some stuff i mean at this point i think she's pretty fed up with me Okay. You know what I mean? Like, at a certain point, the, your parents, at least my parents, have stopped listening to a lot of stuff, which is probably good. No, yeah, my parents don't even know what I do for a living. <laughs> my parents are pretty sure I live on a street. Um, <laughs> they have no idea I'm a functioning adult in society. No, I mean, I think they think I work for a radio station still. Really? They're like, oh, he does a show still, like I did before, because it was on a radio station or whatever, and it was in their town but they didn't like turn it on necessarily. And now they think I'm in just another city doing doing the same thing. Yeah, my parents, at a certain point, they're like, okay, we love you. We're just going to take a step back in terms of like how involved we're going to be. Oh, they were involved before though. It felt like it. Like my parents were low key like, we're taking a step back. They, they just straight <laughs> they're up like, were like, we're done with this. <laughs> yeah. Have they come to your shows? Yeah, they came. They've come to shows. They're cool when they're at shows. My you don't have many jokes supportive. about your parents, do you? No. Yeah, see, no, I have like terrible. I say terrible things about my parents. I mean, it's all things that are they've done. <laughs> they're all true. Yeah, they're all they're, real they are instances. Terrible. <laughs> my dad really gets it worse than my mom does in my live show, and my dad loves it though. He comes and he's like, "That's me," and I'm like, "Dad, shut. That's not a good thing, bro." Like, <laughs> yeah. you know. But my mom. Uh, is very like put off by it all. She's like, that was interesting. She said that to me after like, an interesting watching me headline by the way, like a club show. Like the whole crowd is like, oh. and it's still kind of like, that's what you you know, it's still strange. So I told my mom like, don't even come because it just bugs me. I know there could be four hundred people there, and I know my mom's there, so I'm just like, can I say? Cunt? I feel gun shy. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's not even. It's a strange feeling. It's not even gun shy. It's just like, oh my god, I can't believe I'm like. It's almost like doing therapy when, and you're saying things about your parents, and then they're there. I've done that before. Oh my god! I'm like, I just feel like they're not listening to me, and then they're in the room with me. And the right. Therapist's <laughs> like, okay, do you family therapy is pretty gnarly. I've never even done. Regular? I've barely dipped my toe into regular. I've done it, but I haven't done it like extreme, and I'd like to. But family therapy sounds daunting and excruciating excruciating what is your, what is your experience my experience was that exact thing it was Just like <laughs> it was fine for like a couple of weeks what, what was fun about it that's a good question what was fun about it because i can't imagine was, anything being was fun. it was like i felt like i could say i had like a platform to speak what i felt and i felt like it was an even playing field oh so you thought normally like... it's like it's like kid versus adult even though all those <clears> roles are kind of gone since i'm an adult right but that, it just seemed like it evens the playing field and allows your voice to be heard more. Like I would having think that, a third party in the I, room. Yes, exactly. That's what I was going to say. I would think that I want to get the doctor on my side. We all do, Josh. Yeah, Everyone that's... wants the doc <laughs> on their side. That's the goal of a therapy. You're like, hey, doc, what's up? And like the worst, though, is when a therapist calls you out. They're like, um, yeah, I think that you're just not wanting to grow up. That's is that my a sense of betrayal said. then? Yeah. Yeah. No, because that's what I, I feel like I go in trying to manipulate the therapist too often. We all do. So if we're all doing that, it doesn't, that doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem no, like a. the therapists are, ma are no. The therapists know everyone. Do you like a guy listen. therapist or a girl one? A guy. See, I like a girl one. Interesting. Why? I don't know because I have the less, I, I don't, I feel like I can open up to a woman easier. That's how I feel about a man. Right. I think that has something to do with it. Like it's the sex you're attracted to. And then um, I I don't know. I just also the whole manipulation thing. I feel like if they're smarter than me and they know better than me, they'll see through that and beat it. But if I win, I'm like, I need a different therapy. I don't feel excited to go to it anymore. Well, OK, there's been weeks where I've gone to therapy 
and my therapist has said something and it pissed me off and I was like that's not true <laughs> and then like I didn't talk to him and I was pissed off at him and then like a week later I was like I guess he is right interesting um well that's what I want I want somebody to challenge me and be like you're until wrong. it happens and then you're like Ugh, I guess I am wrong <laughs> that's the thing I go in with the whole like I want the mo I have the motive of I want them to be on my side I want to like charm them into agreeing with me and then when they agree with me, I'm like, well, that wasn't fun. Well, do you think that's like a comic thing where you're Maybe. like, I want to win them over with I think so, love yeah. and joy and jokes? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, they're not going to expect to love me as much as they're about to. <laughs> oh, my God. And it makes me maybe just think of, have you seen Ted Lasso? I haven't. Oh, my God, watch it. I know you don't like sports, but it doesn't really have anything to do with soccer. Everyone says it's very good. It's so good. I'm I'm not one to like it's, I heard spread it's the word. I heard it's that's the thing. I'm not an uplifting man. You the know, the gospel me. of lasso. But it's funny. It's funny and it's like charming. And it's like, it makes me like tear up. I'm like, who am I? I feel like I'm just like and going through menopause or something like in recent days. <laughs> you know? You do. You're just emotional from too much Ted Lasso. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The Ted mean, Lasso's got me in my feels. I get it. No, you should check it out. It's really good. But he goes to therapy and he like is. He doesn't really want to do it, so he's just making jokes the whole time, like deflecting the whole time and making jokes. And it made me think of that. I'm like, is that what I'm doing when I go in there? I'm like bipping and bopping when I rock it? No, because a good therapist would be like, okay, so I asked you a question and you're responding with a joke. And you're like, oh, shit. That's true. Yeah, they do say that. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, it's a defense mechanism. I am also a comedian. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Now- Something that can spur therapy, and I and if you have been a victim of this, I recommend you go to therapy immediately. Get all the help that you need. Um, it's if you're a victim of semen terrorism. Go on. Have you been a victim? Define semen terrorism. Well, we're having a difficult time on this show figuring that out exactly because South Korea defined it as people who are putting semen on women's clothing or throwing <laughs> it on them or putting it in their drinks. South Korea? South Korea, yes. And then we've also heard instances, because I was then asking, have there been instances of domestic semen terrorism? And had a deluge of emails about some experiences. And then we also found an article of a man who was putting semen in syringes and walking up to women in grocery stores. And, and putting shooting it, them? And shooting them inside of them. With, well, what's the purpose of that? That's the thing. We haven't figured out the purpose because a terrorist act involves uh it's like an act of violence or intimidation that is trying to spur some sort of fundamental or political change right right but maybe these it's people just don't a have fantasy it's like a delusion like a fantasy of like, right oh now her now my semen's inside her well that's you know what thing. i mean getting... i injected that bitch yeah no that's the thing it's getting uh their jollies it's getting their rocks off Please say jollies always. I do. That's my favorite. <laughs> They're out there getting their jollies. Get your jollies, king. And <laughs> yeah, but maybe not through semen terrorism. No. But I think it should be a different name for it. It should be like semen anarchists or something like that. Semen because anarchists, I like. Terrorism is just uh. Seems more violent. And this is just like, I mean, I don't think I would be stoked if a random dude came up to me while I was looking at produce and injected me with semen. Exactly what happened to a woman in an article last week. Uh, but no. also, <laughs> yeah. no. She's but have like, you ever. I was looking at the avocados when all of a sudden. <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> she just, and then the man said, felt like a, a little bee sting, didn't it? No. That's yeah. what he said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know what and I mean. He's like, hey, I just got my cum in her. <laughs> yeah. Like I came in her. Would you be stoked to know that it was cum as opposed to like a poison? Yeah. Exactly. I w but like, I mean, you can't get pregnant if someone shoots you up with cum. Not if it's in your flesh, like the way that he did it. No. Right. I don't imagine, unless he like had a different sort of like a turkey baster sort of aspect, and then. Really got I don't it up think in there. Do, I don't think you could do that while someone was looking at pomegranates. That, <laughs> yeah, I don't think you could <laughs> It's <either>. like a <laughs> lot. <laughs> yeah, it would take, a, they would be, have to be numb or something down there. And they're like, can you imagine they're just like squeezing the, the melons? They're like, ugh. Oh, hmm. <laughs> and then meanwhile, this guy's like. <laughs> but how, I mean, I don't even think you could get pregnant from that. How long does like semen ha like be outside of the dick or balls to like stay 
alive alive and swim around i don't know i know that i can live inside of you for five days in your body or in ours in ours so like so like you could because you can you can get pregnant when you're ovulating right right so if someone comes in you right before you ovulate and then you ovulate after they come in. Like you. a few days later. Like a few days later, you could get pregnant. So, what's. An egg. Is there like a common practice of like what to do to like prevent that? Plan B, baby. Well, I that, mean, yeah, okay. Condoms, I didn't know if you had to. Out. Sure. I mean, I don't think pulling out. <laughs> does pulling out in an effective form of birth control? I mean, it's more of a tactic of not even putting it in in the first place, I think. You know, because it's more of, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't think any guy's going to sit here and be like, it's a birth control method. <laughs> but it's more like it's more trying to like just have your cake and eat it too, you know, because at the end of the day, even if you don't go in there, you're going to do those activities. You're going to pull out and right. finish wherever the hell you finish. So you're thinking maybe I can still have that aspect and that be the grand finale, but still be able to put it inside. Right. You know, I don't think that anyone's going to be like. It's it's my condom. I know guys say that, but they're adults. They're short sighted. You can't. You have to pretend at least that you know what the ruse is here. <laughs> <laughs> at the very least. Yeah, you you're know? right. You're right. But I, uh, I just found it interesting because I thought like in South Korea they they are trying to make it a sex crime, which it should be. But right now it's like a a sex crime. How many South Koreans are shooting semen at? Apparently each other? a lot, and it's like happening on a train. People are like wiping it on women and stuff. Like, no. Yes. Yeah. So like right now, what they are calling it though, I forget what they the proper wording is for this, but it's like a um, it's like damage to goods. So they can sue you like for how much your clothes cost if you got semen on the clothes. Do you know what I'm saying? I'd be pissed if someone got semen on my clothes. Well, I was going to ask you, have you had to ever get, like, Venmo a boyfriend request, you know, Venmo request If to it a was boyfriend? a boyfriend, I wouldn't be- make him pay me. Okay. But if it was, different. like, a one-night thing? Yeah. If it yeah. was a one-night thing and he got come on my favorite Western outfit. Right. That's Say a- that happened. <sighs> Venmo request? I mean, what would it you- It depends on what if it was my favorite Western outfit. And how much cum are we talking? Enough that you are... Pissed. Not going to be able to wear it in its original state. Yeah. You know, like dry like, cleaning bill. Okay, either he pays for it or we just never talk again. <laughs> so you would just be, I, you would just ghost him over that as opposed to like I would charging bring it up. him for it? I would not really be like, really want to be like, hey... Can you pay me for this? Because it's also like that's part of what happens when you fuck someone. Like it's inevitable that they're going to come. I it's paid a girl. Like a, it's, I mean, it's, it's not inevitable, folks. Let's get that. Let's true, normalize. <laughs> true. true, you're right. No, but I, uh, I did one time get some in some hair. Okay. And then that happened. Paid a hair bill. You paid a hair bill? Yeah, like a salon. To get it fixed. Did she ask you? Yes. No. Yes. She asked you to pay. Yes, and that's why I was like, "Am I a semen terrorist?" I mean, it was all consensual acts. No, it just because got, gotten there for uh, by accident or whatever. It's not like I was aiming for the hair. Come, be, come flies. Let's just be honest. Come flies. It and... does fly. It <laughs> come flies. <laughs> yeah. That's, come flies. It's that's part the of, word of the day. It's an occupational hazard if you're engaged. If you're engaging in sex, I agree. But like, it's bound to happen. It's like next time, if you don't want to get cum in your hair, wearing a shower cap, wear some goggles, honey. I feel like these were. I didn't ask the nitty gritty of the hair, like what the deal was with it. But I think there were extensions. Oh, you got cum in her extensions. No, that's a ga- that changes everything. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> does that make things different? It does, because <laughs> extensions, I don't know how you would get cum out of. You I don't know either. That's, well, she made me buy it. new ones, essentially. Really? Like, well, whatever, we fixed them or something. I mean, I paid, I think, like 150 bucks. What? Maybe she would need the new extensions to begin with, and then she was like, "Okay, come in them. Okay, great." Oh my oh, god! Do you think she like took a cum bullet? She acted like <laughs> she you jumped in front of it like this. In her hair, <laughs> bitches be crazy. You never know. <laughs> like, she, she threw her hair into it. She threw her hair into your cum. It jumped in front send of it like back, the Secret Service. Send her a Venmo request for that money back. Oh my god! That I mean, that was I was like fine, but it was 
quite a ask. alarming thing. And then also, I just felt now that I'm learning about semen terrorism, I thought, am I a criminal? You know? No, I feel like they're using the word. Okay. Khalik Sheikh Muhammad's. Is that <laughs> Khalik <me>? Sheikh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like it's different if you get come on someone while you're having consensual sex with them Me versus too. like you're on a train with them and <laughs> you're on the train <laughs> and you're like they're like doing yeah. a crossword puzzle and then you throw your cum on their cinnamon roll yeah or like you're at six flags and you just throw it off the swings oh <laughs> the swings yeah. the, <laughs> what do you think about those the, what is that i would say that's my favorite uh ride the swings yeah it's because very it's, like county fair to me. I uh, hey, what did that, we say last oh, time? Oh, you have county fair energy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. your energy. That's me. I'm county fair energy. Yeah, from top to bottom. Yeah, but I don't know. I guess they don't have them in like Disney World. Like, what are you talking high end uh, amusement parks here? I'm talking. I they don't have them. They have them at Magic Mountain. They have them at Six Flags. Right. Like, like we just said. Yes. And they have them at county fairs. Right. They don't have them at Disneyland. Okay. They're not Touché. up to the standard, to the Disney <laughs> standard. So what's your favorite ride? I got many favorite rides. Okay. Um, Lay a mommy, sister. Okay, Space Mountain, Disneyland. Okay, you're going specifics. Yeah. Okay. I'm going Splash Mountain, Disneyland. Wow. I didn't see. I've never been to Disneyland. It's time you get there. I'm only a world guy. And everyone who I've spoken with has, without a doubt, said that Disney World's a thousand times better than Disney Yeah, so I don't know if I could go to land and just, like, enjoy it. Like a peasant? Yeah, exactly. They have some things to be seen. Today's Josh Potter Show is brought to us by FitBod. And the folks at FitBod, they know that perfection is an illusion. I mean, hell, you look at me, I'm, there's... Perfection is far off, my friend, but I can always get a little bit better and I can get a little bit stronger and a little bit faster. And FitBod is here to help with all of those things. And they might be able to help you out if you have some some fitness goals that you want to accomplish down the road here. I mean, hey, I, you, know, you know me, dude. I'm not a big workout guy. FitBod has uh, given me some workouts that I can do just around my house. I don't need any equipment either because I don't have any, frankly. Uh, but FitBod has wonderful body weight routines and, and workouts and things like that that you don't need anything around to use and if you have equipment that's even better they've got stuff uh, depending on what kind of equipment that you might have around the house as a matter of fact uh, I'm getting fi I'm getting fitter I'm getting stronger I'm already feeling like I can uh, run a little bit more without you know hawking up a lung because of my past in terms of smoking and things like that I mean hey if it's two, three times a week, or if it's five times a week, FitBot has something for everybody and their algorithm will constantly challenge you and it will keep going according to how you're progressing. So if you're getting faster and stronger and things are starting to get a little too easy for you, guess what? FitBot is going to be right there to recognize all of that. So right now you can pick up the pace on your fitness journey with FitBot today and your future self is going to thank you, friend. Get 25% off your membership at fitbod.me slash josh. That's 25% off at fitbod.me slash josh, F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash josh. Today's Josh Potter show also brought to us by True Niagen. I love True Niagen. I got to tell you, man, it's just one little badoop and wham. I don't need all those extra cups of coffee to get me through the day. I don't need that extra energy from those Red Bulls. And you notice I didn't have one today. It's because of the fact that True Niagen has not only curbed my appetite for those things and the craving that I have to get more caffeine into my body. And then, you know, you feel nauseous. You get headaches and things like that from having too much of them. Not only has it curbed that appetite, it's also helping me in the pocketbook because those things can be quite expensive, you see. And True Niagen just won, skadoom, and we're on our way. And with 11 published human clinical studies backed by Nobel Prize winners, True Niagen, a supplement that's clinically proven to boost NAD levels, an essential coenzyme required for cellular energy and repair, it also helps with your heart health, believe it or not, whereas I assume those other things probably don't have anything beneficial for your heart going on with them. And uh, right now, by the way, you can save on your first purchase by going over to trueniagen.com slash potter. 
Just use code, code uh, POTTER10. That's trueniagen.com slash POTTER, T-R-U-N-I-A-G-E-N.com slash POTTER. Use code POTTER10, and you're going to save 10% on your first purchase. Trueniagen.com slash POTTER, code POTTER10. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. I didn't know they had a space and a splash. Space and Both splash. mountains, eh? They got both mountains. Does it Florida? Yes, they do, yeah. Um, and I like Splash Mountain because they play zippity doo dah. Yes, okay. <laughs> it's <laughs> problematic sick, now. I'm Splash sick. Mountain, they're going to change it. Do you know that? Because it has racist undertones. Yes. Disney. Because zippity doo dah is from a fucking. Oops. Zippity doo dah day back in the day, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Bippity boppity boo, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, I don't know what they're going to change it to, but it's all like that. Song of the South and all that shit. It's all like I've heard. I heard it has racist undertones. I like it purely for the joy that it brings. I don't me, even know if it has racist undertones. I think it's just legitimately racist. But I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Disney. I mean, I don't remember. It. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, uh, they say all kinds of wacky doodle, wacky doodle things about Disney, like he hated Jews. Yeah, that's always yeah, my favorite. Yeah, yeah, and like, yeah, and that. I've he heard probably that a lot. did. It was the thirties. Yeah, <laughs> everyone I heard hated that a Jews. Lot. <laughs> that's like saying we were talking about nine eleven earlier in the in the day. <laughs> yeah, right before we started, we, yeah. we had a loose nine eleven chat. Before I was thinking about this before Twitter, no one was calling things out like that. Like we had because of the coronavirus, we had stop Asian hate, the big hashtag. Right. But the irony is, you know. Nobody's telling China to stop the Asian hate over there. <laughs> They're like, <laughs> China's doing some of the worst Asian hate there in all of the world. And then meanwhile, during 9-11 or after 9-11, the fallout, you know, obviously there was a lot of racism against people in the Middle East and things like that. And um, people who uh, have like the uh, Islam faith um, that they show. But it's like there was no Twitter to be like, hashtag stop Islam hate. Do you know what I mean? Right. I bet there would have been some sort of movement towards that but mo for mo for the most part it was like everyone was kind of galvanizing to be racist at that time you know Interesting. what i mean yeah because people don't realize that you can be part of the religion islam and not a terrorist. exactly people were like the more uh people were leaping to more like i'm gonna beat up every cab driver i see you know what i mean it was fucking wild for a little while there and, and nobody said anything like People went on the news and stuff and were like, not every Islam per like even George W. Bush had to come out and say it. But would that happen today? Like even Trump wasn't like, not every Asian is a part of Wuhan. You know what I mean? He yeah. didn't come out and say anything like that, but we had the hashtags and things. So I don't know. It's very I odd. I like when you say hashtag. You I do then, this. He does it. I do it every time. He does a symbol. <laughs> like hashtag. he's sign like languaging. I'm doing this, the quotes. <laughs> hashtag, hashtag stop Asian hate. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And hashtag. Then, uh, Hashtag stop Islam. Islamic hate. But there was, if there was Twitter in the 30s, they would have had to make a stop Jewish hate. Because they everybody, would've. everybody, and I would have been like, stop Jewish hate, stop Jewish hate. I wouldn't be here. <laughs> Every time I uh, like agree with somebody, I go, me too. <laughs> I do. I've been doing no, that. You don't. Yes, I do. <laughs> There's something me about too. the way you deliver it that it's makes it seem like you're in the solidarity and i like that well before we get off the semen terrorism topic yes let's let's talk i about do have an email here from uh jason mcgowan uh hey papa roach little roach living under the deep freeze of canada years ago i worked in a grocery store and was questioned by police on the instance of semen terrorism so a grocery store it seems to be a popular place for people to can a conduct. bitch pick up some paper towels without getting pumped on? <laughs> I, yeah, right. I mean, the grocery store for semen terrorists is like a train for regular ones. It's crazy. <laughs> Someone spread out all the manager's belongings, apparently, while they were away from their office, and then they proceeded to come all over them. The kicker of the story is the culprit's mother also worked for the store and had to face the same ridicule. So they had to go up to the mother and be like, were you coming on all this stuff? Do you know what I mean? She had to go through the interview section. Your face is so disturbing. I'm like thinking about it because I'm like. I'm thinking about I'm it. I'm just thinking about. <laughs> I feel like honestly, personally, and I'm sure people will disagree with me. I would rather find cum on my belongings than blood. I would rather that too. Why? Because cum doesn't seem. That's why I also want to know, like, how Unless do they know it's, it's cum? Like I wouldn't. You, come leap. is come is come. You know what I'm saying. I guess so, you know what a cum, what a cum load looks like. I don't know. I don't know that I do. I don't know that I do. <laughs> and I'm gonna say because I'm gonna say that because 
I wouldn't leap to come right away. I'd be like, oh, there's something all over my stuff. If I saw white, clumpy shit but on my, my cum stuff. But my isn't like dry white. I don't know, like, I've never there's had that happen. clear cum, white cum. There's all kinds, right? There's cum a plenty. There's cum a plenty. But there's all different viscosities, colors. Viscosity. When we use the word viscosity in regards to cum, I feel intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> That's its thickness, right? Viscosity? Yes. yes. So I just feel as though I wouldn't leap to come right away without like a test. Someone would have to really be like, dude, I think that's come. Then I'd be like, ah, oh, and I couldn't unsee it then. But I wouldn't go. It depends where I was. If I was in a comedy club, first get thing would be like, this is come. Like a comedy condo or a comedy club? Any of it. Okay. Well, what <laughs> it about was... if you're a grocery store manager and you come to work and it's store... your desk? I'm not going come first of all. Right. There's well, so now many things I, in a I don't know because maybe the people of the grocery store all know about semen terrorism and we're actually the ignorant people on the outside because we don't work in the in the grocery store. True that. But also, how can you verify if it's come or not? Is there a, Taste? Like, a test? <laughs> I know, right? Is someone like, that's come. Like, do the cops show up? You know how they do with like cocaine where they're like, <laughs> that's mean, come, all right. I think. <laughs> they have to bring in the cum dogs. They <laughs> bring in the cum dog. <laughs> bring in the cum dog, the canine unit. Yep. This Sniff is, out this cum. This is cum. <laughs> I don't know. It depends I mean, on where I was in my life. If I was trying to get pregnant, I might scoop up that cum, put it in a little baggie. This isn't like <laughs> fresh batches. This is like <laughs> dried, dried out. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Like on his belongings. Oh. It's not like a fresh look. I mean, if it was fresh. That's We'd all bathe timing. in it. No, yeah. <laughs> if it was fresh. It's fresh. Put that on your fucking face. Get it in your pores. Yeah, baby. Let's go to the sports, shall we? I love beep, sports. Beep, 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 beep. I love sports. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Touch him. Racquetball. It could be like you know, your intro of your podcast. You're out. <laughs> pickle, pickleball was your fourth one. Racquetball is your third one. Or no, I, I guess, don't know the difference between. I don't even know what pickleball is. Either do I. But the fact that you could have named any of the sports and you picked those two was pretty fun. Strike one. Now, did you? I remember you had in your uh, app swiping and such yeah. for the boys. You had a professional hockey player. Oh, yeah, I did. Have you ever gone f uh, forth with the professional athlete? No. A professional athlete's not my vibe. Not That's interesting. And it doesn't entice you at all. You don't even want to, like, dip your toe in it. No. And that was a hockey player, correct? Yes, that was a hockey player. Well, maybe you're more suited for, like, management people. I feel like that would be better for me. Yeah, like, I feel like I would much rather date someone who's... Um, I'd rather date a coach than a player. A if coach? I was, yeah. They're usually very old. I like an old coach. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like an old coach. He has coach. like a clipboard. <laughs> Things are happening. Um, yeah, I just don't see myself with an athlete. Interesting. Well, this kid, um, there's a documentary on Netflix right now, uh, and it's about this kid whose father was a, like the real-life Tony Soprano. Okay. Like he ran all these garbage dumps, but really he was in the mob. And he, his kid loved hockey, played hockey in high school. He got hurt and he couldn't play anymore. So his 17th birthday, his dad bought him a minor league hockey team so that he can run it. That's weird. That's weird. I was going to say, this doesn't sound like a guy you'd want to like. Fuck. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Date? Yeah, no. Yeah. Um, I don't want anyone whose dad bought them a hockey team. <laughs> There's something gross about that. To me. Interesting. It's like, oh, my boyfriend, his daddy bought him a hockey team. And what if now he turned he's it into a, a real manager? Yeah, he turned it into a really good team, though. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know, it's not my vibe. Sports that's, guy's not my vibe. That's true. Sports guy's not your vibe. Interesting. Mm -hmm. It's amazing that some people, it's like so their vibe. I'm like the way opposite. What are, what are you into? Well, the guy that I'm dating right now is into comic books and video games. There you go. You know what I mean? Yeah, I yeah, guess yeah. that would be the opposite of sports. I guess so. I mean, I like both of them, but from a dork standpoint, like I'm a nerd about sports. Like I've never played football. I've never played hockey. Do you know what I mean? But I watch it. And so yeah, I, feel I like like that play about the video games and I collect the cards and stuff like that. So that's kind of like comic books. 
in a way. Totally. I play fantasy football. I'd rather Dungeons and Dragons, aka fantasy football, yeah. aka Gen- Dungeons and Dragons. Okay, like I've dated several guys who are involved in fantasy football. Mm-hmm. And um, it's not like a vibe of football, really. I mean, I had one guy who was in like six leagues, and every time. Every Sunday, I knew he was not going to be available to me. That's cool, though, right? I remember you telling me about that, and it was like you'd go shopping and stuff. I was like, I'm having a personal day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah have fun, honey. Like, <laughs> Well, maybe you've picked up through your through your uh, fantasy football ex some, mm-hmm. some knowledge, and you don't even know. I don't know anything. Well, let's find out. I'm going to have you rank oh, shit. the top five running backs. I have no idea. Okay. But I'm going to have you base it off their fashion. Okay. Because <laughs> you're not going to watch a highlight of them. You're just going to see their fashion. What was that, by the way? And let's see how they present themselves. Yeah. Was that something I should have been talking about? Um, That was the guy who missed a kick. Caleb Dowden. Okay. I forget what that was. Let's see what that... Let's watch it. I forget what um, it's, it's not a video. It's just a oh, clip of I'm when sorry. he kicked the... He missed the goal right, on purpose. Right. Read that tweet to me. Um, He said, had to take one for the team. Right. Because he kept the score at 69 to nothing, correct? Yes. So Caleb Dowd, and I don't know, I, I was going to bring that up later. I forgot about that. I had it written down. This kicker, the score was 69 nothing. Yeah. And so he went to kick it, an extra point, and he missed it on purpose so the score would stay that way. 69. And everyone was like, how did he miss that extra point? And he was it's like. It's like a dumb purpose because 6-9? Yeah, yeah. It was a 6-9 joke? Yeah, it was a 69 What joke. a king. We love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was, it's a college kid, you know. So he like could. <laughs> He might have like screwed up his own statistics or whatever just to keep it at sixty nine. Okay, was, God bless him. But here are the people that we're going to be ranking now. They are, and people are mad at me because I left off Christian McCaffrey. But I'm basing this off the top five of the NFL's top one hundred list, and I didn't do it projection wise. I did it based off last year. Of course, Christian McCaffrey was hurt last year, so he's not on the list. So what? Boo hoo. He probably would have dressed like a mook anyway. So the first guy up is Derrick Henry, and I'll tell you because it's tough to see. On his suit is every name of a person killed by cops, a black person that's killed cool. by cops. Yeah. Okay. So there's George Floyd's on there, Breonna Taylor. You got the whole, that's all of them. Okay. Cool. So you Derek have Derrick Henry. So he's the first one. So we'll put him at like, right now he's a floater. You know, you're going to, okay. he'll go up and down with the rest of them. He oh, plays can for, you write D- Derrick gonna, Henry and then in parentheses, yes. jacket. Derrick Henry jacket. Yes. Name jacket. Okay. And then uh, I, just a little bit other things about him. He's the biggest guy. I don't know if that affects anything for you. He's the biggest guy of the guys. And he is the on the Tennessee Titans. The biggest guy of what? Like physically the biggest guy. Biggest man. Out of all the this ones This one see. I like. Ooh, yeah. This Who's is this Alvin guy? Kamara. He plays for the New Orleans Saints. And that is a, I believe, chinchilla coat. I don't know if it's faux or real. I like the real. chinchilla thing he's doing. Yeah. What does he do? He's, <laughs> these that, are all running backs. All I can so this see is the yeah. Is the outfit. These are all running okay, backs, so and you're gonna guess based on the outfit. Yes, and who's gonna get the most touchdowns this year? This guy's outfit is killing it. Okay, you like him top of the list. Top, he goes to the top. <laughs> top right? of the list. All right. So far, let's see the next. No one, one is wearing a compare. coat like either of these guys, unless they're good at what they do. Now this guy. Uh, oh. Okay. Nothing at all. He's shirtless. He's got a fish. His name is Dalvin Cook. He is for the Minnesota Vikings. He looks buff as fuck. Right. He doesn't need any drip because he's like, I'm just going to wear like, my muscles. Oh, my my body is my drip. Yeah, exactly. Um. Okay, so... But he's I'm holding a fish. Does, of... that give, does that make him lose points? Yeah, because I'm not into fishing. Well, yeah, I mean, am if I you just, see... Am I fucking these guys or rating them for... <laughs> rating them, but I... <laughs> <laughs> for their sports. Rating I'm them like, for their wait, sports, the fish sure. is a deal breaker for me. Right, right. I just thought... I put the fish in there because I've heard complaints about these fish, fish pictures. Fish. Yeah. I was wondering if you could describe it to sports? me. But am I going on sports? You could be, so maybe that's a, that's a good point. Maybe because you would see a fish, you're like, yuck, the fish, but he's probably good at football. So. Yeah, I think he's really good at football. Okay, I mean, all of them are really good. I know, but there's something about the energy he's putting out with the nose shirt. I can wear whatever I want. Here's what is he fish. holding in his hand? On the other side, I can't tell, but I know he's a holding snack? the fish. It oh, looks... that's all. Oh, that's just the fishing pole. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, I think he's the best. Okay, he's going at the top. And then the chinchilla coat, mm-hmm. and then the George Floyd coat. Okay, 
I'm going to put fish. Fish All right. man. Next, there's only two more. Okay. Oh, shit. Uh-oh, suit man. Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb. What a name, huh? Nick Chubb. Um, I can't Classic really suit. Go- He's a running back as well. They're all running backs. All right, classic suit. Let's put him up top. Award show. Let's he goes to the top. Huh? Everyone else gets put down. I don't know if this is because of the suit, and now I can't think straight. <laughs> I love a suit. All right. That's a nice one, huh? That's a good suit. It fits him well. I like the tie with it. I like the vest. It's great. Hey, this could turn out, I mean, this is so Oh, far. no. What's Aaron going on Jones here? is culturally appropriating <laughs> Mexican culture. <laughs> he's in a mariachi hat. Yeah. Uh, I forget what that shirt says. He says, the lights are too bright for you. If the lights are too bright for you, get off the field. There you go. You the nailed it. too bright for you, get off the field. There okay, you go. Okay. I like his energy. And he's a grill. I think. He's got a girl. He's got a pinky ring. He's yep. got a chain. Wow. He has dreads that are bleached at yep. the ends. Colored okay, ones. Okay, okay. Let's see. He has a fun energy. I don't... I'm putting him... So it goes suit, fish... <laughs> <laughs> chinchilla coat or does he go ahead of the chinchilla coat he goes coat? ahead of chinchilla whoa wow wee okay Aaron Jones chinchilla and then last but not least the name jacket that makes me feel bad <laughs> <laughs> I can makes, see it in your face you makes... go like oh I put the guy who had the jacket but hey I mean he's just wearing their names okay yeah it's don't not feel a per- bad. It's not a personal it thing. It doesn't mean you're not going to say I'm Breonna Taylor. I'm based on their yeah. athletic <laughs> ability. Right. Yeah. And it's not I like you're like. George Floyd. Okay. Go yeah, on. Yeah. You use the black square or whatever the hell. I don't know. So I here guess. we go. Let's, let's, this is Sarah's final rankings. And then uh, we had, we did this with Chase O'Donnell last time too. All so right. Let's see. We're going to be team Chase or team Sarah. We'll find out. So number one, you have ranked Nick Chubb, then Dalvin Cook, then Aaron Jones, then Alvin Kamara, and last but not least, Derrick Henry. How does that compare to Chase's? Well, she had Derrick Henry at number one. What did I, I have don't know Derrick if it was Henry? The last place. No! <laughs> <laughs> but no! she doesn't know anything about this either. Okay. She might have done it because of his performative coat. Okay. You never know. Yeah, good point, good point. The scales are flip-flopping. Alvin Kamara, number two. What do I have him as? You had him as number f- you, this is literally the exact opposite well, second to last yeah so she's the opposite of you which one Delvin was Cook Alvin? was number three he was the chinchilla coat oh um Dalvin Cook another so it kind of sounds the same you have second she has third she has Nick Chubb second to last you of course have him first place and then she has Aaron Jones last she didn't uh, she didn't appreciate the sombrero evidently the mariachi vibe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought so it was a last. fun loving. Well, hey, it's very different and that's good because now you can you can decide am I team Sarah, team Chase, and we'll see who wins at the end. And when I'll have a prize for you at the end of the season. <laughs> at the end of the season? Yeah, yeah. So I, I mean it'll be a good way to find have you come out back. today. Like, oh, did I beat Chase? No, 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 not today. I mean we'll find it's gonna be a long I running. Judge thing, these so men we'll based back. on their outfits. Exactly. And then we'll uh, see if you feel the year. bad about the one I, I know the I box. could see it in your face I the second like, I was like and the one with the names on his coat <laughs> is last and you're like <sighs> you made a face where you're like ah, not Wait. because of the coat you tried to give it a justification it was just an energy thing I picked up on exactly it's okay no one's blaming you <sighs> I hope I win I think you might I'm excited well I don't know actually I'm looking at her list and uh, Derrick Henry's really good that's the problem wait who do I have as number one Nick Chubb, he's good too, though. I mean, it could go, it's a whole new season, folks. When does the new season start? Well, at the time of this taping, we have just had the first week of football. So we're already kind of getting an inkling as to how this is going to go from the first week. But as of this recording, I should mention, we are recording this on the eve of the NFL season. So it begins tomorrow. You guys, get ready. I know you're horny. Tomorrow's the first day. <laughs> Tomorrow's a big first I day. Know you're it's horny. the first. All you football fans are horny for football. You want to so see horny. men wrestling men in tights. Touchdown, baby. Today's Josh Potter show is brought to us by Mint Mobile. Man, I can't tell you. I've had a cell phone now since I was in, what, seventh grade? I mean, it's been a part of my life longer than it hasn't been a part of my life. And I can't tell you how many times I get screwed by big wireless providers. Big wireless out there, just like big anything else, screwing people left and right. 
I mean, they got those fine print contracts where you sign off on them thinking you're all fine and hunky-dory, and then all of a sudden, wham, you're getting charged, and you're like, what's this for? And you find out that you're getting screwed to the wall. I mean, if there's anything I've learned, uh, it's the fact that uh, there's always a catch when it comes to that stuff. And so thank goodness for Mint Mobile. They're offering premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. I thought, what's the catch here? But after speaking with them and going through all of it and using their service, it all made sense to me. There isn't a catch. Mint Mobile's secret sauce is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only. So by cutting up the retail stores, there's no crazy overhead costs that get passed down to you in the form of mystery fees. Instead, Mint just passes on sweet savings direct to you, my friend. Uh, so for people looking for extra savings, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless at just 15 bucks a month. You can still use your own cell phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. So if you're worried about change being too much for you, not much is changing other than the money that you are going to save, my friend. And you're not 100% satisfied, Mint Mobile has covered or has you covered with their seven-day money-back guarantee. So if you switch over and you don't like it and you want to go back to big wireless for some crazy reason, Mint Mobile has your back. So to get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash josh. That's mintmobile.com slash josh. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash josh. Today's Josh Potter Show is also brought to us by the fine folks at Purple. Purple Mattress Company, my friend. Oh, boy. They've got the grid. If you haven't heard about the grid yet, you're missing out. I've learned, uh, you know, during quarantine, I spent a lot of time in bed. Turns out post-quarantine, still do the same thing. And thank goodness for Purple Mattress and the grid. Because, man, the summer has been hot no matter where you are in the United States, if you had the grid on your mattress, you would have been sleeping cool, my baby. That's right. It's got a uh, ventilated design that allows airflow through it to help you sleep nice and cool, even when it's 1,000 degrees outside. And unlike memory foam, which remembers everything, uh, the grid bounces back as you move and shift, so you never get that I'm stuck feeling that you do with memory foam. Uh, you can try your purple uh, purple mattress risk free right now with free shipping and returns. Financing is available too. Purple is comfort reinvented. Right now, you'll get ten percent off any order of two hundred dollars or more. Just go to purple dot com slash josh. Use promo code josh. That's purple dot com slash josh. Promo code josh for ten percent off any order of two hundred dollars or more. Purple dot com slash josh. Promo code josh. Terms apply. Would you go to a sporting event as a date? Yeah. 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 Um, you said that with like an eye roll. <laughs> that sounded like, like every girl that I've asked to go on a date. Yeah. To. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> would I go? Yeah, I would. I I would like to go to a basketball game the most. Interesting. I feel like basketball is the most interesting for me to is watch. Is that because, oh, I was going to say, is it because of that or is it because people like dress up when they go to a basketball game? Do they? If they're sitting close, if they're sitting kind of near the floor. Like Jack Nicholson energy. Just yeah, like, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. what's up? Um, hey, Sarah. <laughs> if I had good seats, I would dress up. Hey, Sarah. I like your skirt. <laughs> I, does he even go anymore? Is he? What? Where has he been? I don't know, but I remember somebody, I think it was Adam Ray was telling me he had like courtside seats to the Clippers, not the Lakers, but it's the same stadium, obviously. So you go back and you have the same amenities. And he saw Jack Nicholson just hanging back there. Apparently, Jack Nicholson just like lives in the Staples Center. That's kind of fun. Yeah, it is. I mean, they have great catering and stuff. I'd love to go courts. I, w- I would love that experience courtside one day. Basketball is my distant fourth as far as sports go. Like distant fourth. Like out of all of like it goes uh, football, baseball. baseball, hockey, and then basketball's way down here. But I still kind of know what's going on. But see, for me, it goes basketball. Baseball. Mm-hmm. Soccer. Soccer, okay. To go watch, you're saying, or just like your favorites? <sighs> I don't know. Yeah. I mean, in terms of watching, I like the idea of a baseball game, but by like the fifth inning, your girl's taking a nap. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I mean, hey, I think that's a lot of people, but I like it because it's like, it's like golfing for me too. I don't necessarily give a fuck about golfing. I just like being outside. I like the I like the idea of going to a game. More I like so day than drinking I, and I like eating hot dogs too. M- me day drinking is not good. See, that's what I, I mean. 
who is good day drinking? That's what I want to know. I feel like I used to be maybe, or that's just a lie I told myself in college. Well, I haven't been on since I've been to Milwaukee, and I'll say this. I just went to a Brewers game in Milwaukee before my show, uh, and I was debating it because I was saying to myself, if I go to the game before the show, that'll take away from the show, and I won't get to have as much fun at the game as I want to have. Right. Because I want to like go hard at the game. To the point where, like, I must sleep by 5.30 p.m. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, Right, like, you want to barely remember the game, pass out, regroup. Yes. Wake and up then, a new man later on for a midnight snack So I, a Twitch stream. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Right? Yes. <laughs> so then I thought, well, I'm only going to be, I'm, how often am I in fucking Milwaukee? So I did it. Not you know? often enough. So I drank a little bit. I had about, I had three tall boys. I kept it easy, you know. I had a couple hot dogs, three tall boys. I had a little bit of a buzz. If I had a couple hot dogs and some tall boys, I would be. But here's the shitty part. A different person. Really? I, yeah. Was it the best way to get ready for a show? Probably not. <laughs> but I was fine. The show was a lot of fun, and then I got extra drunk after the show because I had been just drinking all day. It was bad. I'm still still recover. It's Wednesday now, and I'm still recovering. recovering. But I. Uh, I mean, the dogs and the beers didn't settle well. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, here's the shitty part, though. I huh. left at the top of the eighth inning. The Brewers were down 5-1, to one, and I missed a walk-off grand slam for them to win the game. Fuck. At the bottom of the ninth. Like, I missed did the I, whole game, basically. Did you see my reaction? You were like, I don't know what you're talking about. Fuck. <laughs> that's a good not, act. You're an actress, aren't you? Not the grand slam. Not the what did you not call Not the grand slam. Is that what you just said? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, is yeah. that a meal from Denny's? <laughs> it <grand>? is actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's how I know sports based on if it's on the Denny's menu. <laughs> that's hilarious. But yeah, no, I got to, I, had to, I missed the whole thing. So I was bummed out. And someone stole my Ryan Braun bobblehead doll. No. They were giving him away at the stadium and I put mine down to get Mustard some, on my hot dog. <laughs> some I turned my back, and someone scooped it up. So what are you putting on your hot dog? Just I just mustard? Put, I went mustard and sauerkraut. Okay. I know that's not a. No, yeah, I like you know. mustard. Yeah, I love mustard. I'm a fan of mustard. You have to go. Mu- ketchup is for children. Ketchup on French fries. I can't do ketchup. Period. Really? Let's talk about that. What's yeah, going I don't on? like ketchup. What happened? It's Who too are you? sweet. It's too sweet. It just tastes like garbage to me. I don't like ketchup. I'll put anything on. I'll even do mayo on fries before I do ketchup. Listen, say what you will about mayo. I know, like, I love the, the poor whites love it. Yeah. But it's fucking good. I love mayo. I'm gonna, like, you're never going to hear a bad thing about mayo come out of my mouth. The rich whites are like, it's an aioli. <laughs> aioli, yeah, they just changed the name of yeah, it. Yeah, you're fucking, like, it's mayo, bitch. They put some olive oil, extra <laughs> olive oil in it or some bullshit. Yeah, they put a little squirt of a different flavor, and now it's an aioli. What about other toppings on your hot dog? Relish, I would do, but it's not. It's, it's not like I'm not seeking it out. Sweet dill. What are we talking here, relish wise? Sweet dill. Sweet or dill? I could do either. Oh, okay. You like you said sweet dill. I thought that, that <laughs> I thing? thought you were saying it was sweet dill. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, sweet dill. Sweet um, dill. <laughs> it sounds like you're saying sweet dill, but yeah, you're yeah, saying yeah. like from the valley. Sweet, sweet dill. dill. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I had like three of them, and then I had like three tall boys, like I said. So, but I three swear, hot dogs, three buns. My poor Ryan Braun bobblehead. I put him down, and then <laughs> he's, he's, I turned my I'm back to get about the. It every day. I have been. It's like I'm having tra- traumatic, like uh, I'm PTSD. having nightmares. I'm waking up. Yeah. I put mustard on my hot dog. I turned around, gone. And then I was walking around like the mom in Jaws. I'm like Alex, <laughs> Alex. Like I was just wandering, like I. <laughs> <laughs> well, news time. Yes, we love news. You hate the sport. The sports are over. Don't worry. You sure did rank them. <laughs> What's that? Cardi B. Is that? I don't know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, the top headline here. Yes. It reads: Man cuts off own penis on police chase. Wow, okay. Lots to unpack here. Lot. A 39-year-old Tennessee man named Tyson Gilbert has been apprehended by authorities after he cut off and tossed his penis during a police pursuit. It began shortly after he was parked in the way of traffic on the highway. He sped off 
and then authority, uh, authorities tried to uh, flag him down. When I pulled up behind him and turned on my lights, he took off and he refused to stop. He was all over the road the whole time, says a highway patrolman. He turned off on Old Liberty Road and came to a stop. He opened his door. He was naked and covered in blood. He then shut his door and kept driving. Wild. I hope it was his own blood. It doesn't say quite yet. But you don't like bl- You'd rather come than blood. You'd rather the man would be. I I would rather come than pee or blood. Come number one. Yes. And then and then my own pee. come preferably my own come number one. I'll say that's my list. My own come number one. Yeah. As well. So number two <laughs> probably no. number two another come maybe goes below it. Okay, so first it's personal come then yes. it's friends come. Auxiliary come. <laughs> Ox come. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. And then probably blood. Pee. Oh, for me, pee over blood. <sighs> I cannot do pee. As long as it's not dehydrated piss. That's the like, thing. I'm, I'm looking for a soft yellow, almost white. Pee. Well, that would be the ideal. Where, you <laughs> yeah, know, I don't want a dehydrated coffee drinker. What cup. if it was like a cat um, piss? piss? No, cat piss is one of the worst smells cat, in the So world. you take cat piss separate from human piss? It would if you're go ranking human it, human piss. <laughs> it would go. It would go. Okay. Yeah. It would go. My cum. Someone else's cum. Um. P. Okay. Uh. Very. Someone who's well, been quenched. Human urine. Hydrated human urine. Okay. So we're differentiating. Yes. The then levels dehydrated of... human urine. That goes then forth. Cats. Then pee. cat piss. Yes. Then. Blood is beneath all of these. Then shit. Then blood. Then shit, then blood. <laughs> yes. Wow, what did blood do to you? I don't like blood. I guess not. I hate blood. <laughs> I guess blood you don't. Blood makes me so grossed out. I guess it does. Well, let's see. This guy Would might have gotten to all of it. Would you put shit before or after? Shit goes to the bottom for me. After blood? You'd rather After blood. Blood, than... blood is ahead of piss for me. That's insane to me. Blood might be ahead of human cum. No. Or uh, uh, other people come, auxiliary come. Well, blood feels like death. Blood goes second to me. Blood's a, no. Blood's last. Blood's last. Interesting. That's your Derrick Henry of your uh, list. Yeah. Did I put <laughs> Derrick Henry last? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that blood was also in his suit. You're going to hear the name Derrick Henry and it's going to haunt you now. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, Derrick Henry. I like the suit. So let's see if it was his own blood or if it was somebody else's. Uh, The chase went through two counties, and at some point, he cut off his own genitalia. The police department spiked him on Highway 70 as he was going through Alexandria. He kept traveling westbound into Wilson County. Uh, The highway patrol spiked him, which I assume is like uh, the spike strip, you know? Um, Oh, We were finally able to box him in and got him stopped on Highway 70 right before Interstate I-40 and took him into custody. He was then transported to the hospital. Um, it really is glossing over this whole cutting off his dick thing. The first yeah, strip took out. It should be the whole story. It's we want to hear about the. I dick. don't care about what road he was on. That's like yeah, the whole thing. No. It's like he stopped him at this point on the highway. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Where's where is the part where he took his dick off? Uh, the Wilson County Sheriff's Department tried to spike him. Blah blah blah. After that, it became slow speed pursuit with him running on his rims until we boxed him in, according to authorities. Gilbert said he cut off his penis because he heard voices from his car radio <laughs> that told him to do it in order to save the world. What if he was just listening to my podcast? He's like, oh, I gotta cut off my dick to save the world. I might have said that. What at about some point. the dick is gonna save the world? I don't. He probably wasn't asking questions. He was just doing what the radio voices told him to do. If there was a radio voice that told you to chop off, I don't your listen dick. to anybody. So. But some people think God's real. <laughs> so punk rock of you. <laughs> um, some people do think God's real. So, I mean, he just thought, he's like, they were like, Gilbert, cut your penis off right now. You know, Do it just, for the Lord. If he, if you would have heard, I don't know, what if you would have heard them talking to you? like, and Cut you your this, clit off for yeah, the Lord? That's I'd they, be like, I need help. <laughs> different religion probably, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> la, la, like that kind of shit, but. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Wild stuff, though. I mean, I don't know. You've you've dealt with psychiatric uh, homes and things like that. Have you heard yes. of anybody with the voices? Anyone with up, voices come up in your radar, or like, have you spoken to anybody who's Who dealt with sees that? Voices that aren't there. Well, hears them, yeah. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> you said sees voices. Sees voices, hears voices. Yeah, yeah, if they saw the voices, I would be more concerned. They would also concerned. be locked up, yeah, tattered yeah, yeah. wall situation. Um, I'm trying to think. No, I don't think so. I, maybe unless it was like a homeless person talking to themselves on the street. But I haven't encountered many people who hear things that aren't there. I don't. Oh know my god, we encountered a woman uh, on the street one night. We did. That remember that after that show? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We were like tripping, and this woman came up to us and was like. You stupid bitch. She's like yelling at you. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking bitch. Smile again at me. We we're like, what? Oh, like, yeah, that? I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, what's smile intense? at me again. Do it again, you fucking bitch. <laughs> and I was like, what's happening? We're like, we just did a show. We're on a low amount of mushrooms. And now yeah, there's I'm a strange good. street walker. This stupid lady is trying to ruin my She's buzz. probably the one of the last people I interacted with who was hearing voices in her head. Definitely was hearing voices because she was going up to Sarah and was like, idiot woman! <laughs> <laughs> Yelling at you and shit. Well, I don't know. Stupid I mean, bitch. maybe this guy's just super woke. Maybe he's just super feminist and he cut off his penis to save the world because he couldn't tr- control his own toxic masculinity. Well, that changes everything. Right? That's what I'm saying. Slice your dick off for feminism. <laughs> oh, here was the other... Uh, the other news things I had are all sports things, which is so funny. I've, I've had them mixed up here. Um, but we had that image of the kicker with the 69 thing. I had that written right. down over here. But there was another story in the NASCAR world. This is more like gossipy than it is about anything to do with NASCAR. Good, let's talk. Because like, there's this guy, Denny Hamlin, right? He's a great NASCAR driver. Young guy. Denny. Can we pull up an image of him? Can you like show Sarah Denny Hamlin for a second while I describe what's going on here? So he's like super rich at this point, right? He owns his own team now. He has a sponsorship with Michael Jordan. Uh, but he's been married throughout his career to this woman, Jordan Fish. And recently she took to Twitter to blow up Denny Hamlin's spot. There they are right there, as a matter I... of fact. Jordan Fish, that's him and his wife on the right. Okay. So I mean, he's kind of like a whatever guy, you know? Uh, The girlfriend of NASCAR driver Denny Hamlin took to Twitter uh, last week seemingly to out her partner for his bad behavior. No. The two tweets imply Hamlin has been less than a good boyfriend and father. So he's the father of her kid, but not uh, they're not married. Yes. She doesn't go into specifics, but she writes on there. She was doing the stories, you see. On Instagram? On Instagram. Or she she did some tweets, too, actually. I'm sorry. This bitch is active on social media. She was on the social media flaming her... Her boyfriend, she goes, I have been quiet for far too long and I have endured things no one person should ever have to endure. And today was no exception. Danny Hamlin, I hope everyone will finally see you for the person you truly are. That was like one tweet. Have you seen women do this before? This is like this is unhinged behavior to me. Yeah, this is wild. Like, this is like go to therapy or log I don't know, break off, up. Break up with him and go to therapy. I need the world to know that you screaming into me. the void. Yeah, like what could it possibly be about? Like, have you ever dealt with somebody like this that had that it did done this? Like a friend of yours that where you were like, snap out of it. You have to like slap them across the face. Be or like, something? get off of Twitter, bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've had to tell people any interventions like that. Was it ever anything so damning to the guy's reputation? I haven't had friends who tweet about guys but i've had friends who will tweet about something dramatic that happened mm. and then they'll like it'll be like i don't need, know who needs to hear this but right, okay and then it's like we know who needs to hear that right and then but to everybody else it's just vague nonsense it's vague nonsense and it's also just it's weird because it, it makes you seem like you're you're bringing unworked through trauma to the internet and it's like right. It reminds me of it's gross to do that to the to the dad of your kids is also gross. Now this happened before Twitter, but it seems easier to do that on Twitter than this case that I'm going to say. My mother, when she found out my dad was cheating on her, I was in like seventh grade, I think, and uh, she took me and my sister to confront him about it. No. Yeah, and she was like, "Tell your kids, blah blah." blah. It was like this whole thing. Tell your kids why you did. Yeah, dad. exactly. Yeah. So that was like, uh. Stupid move on her part, for right. the record. Like, a dumb fucking move on her part. Uh, but also, like, very dramatic. I feel like that's what this is on a, like, a more, I don't know, impersonal scale. Because she's, like, bringing it up. Now the press is talking about it, you know? But it's also just, to me, that's so gross. Like, if you have a problem with someone who you have a kid with, 
you would think that you would pick up the phone and talk to them. Right. Or like, like it's just such a petty move to be like, I'm going to tweet to my baby daddy about how he's not the person I thought he was. And unless Denny Hamlin is like fucking around on the road, which he might be, I don't know. Well, they're not. They're not they even together? married. I mean, they're boyfriend and girlfriend, apparently. Uh, but, you know, he's probably gone a lot at the very least because they're, you know, the NASCAR tour goes around the country. They have to go do practice. It's like doing comedy. So, like, you know what I mean? So it's like, do you think it just is something to do with maybe uh, lack of attention and stuff like that? I wonder, you know, because it's all very like, I mean, innocuous. I'm sure dating a NASCAR man is a fucking nightmare. <laughs> well, <Probably. laughs> let me be honest. It doesn't appeal to me in the least. He's got a lot of money. Look, I do have checkered flag You're nails. You're flying private all the time. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I have checkered nails. I wanted something chic, and I left with, like, this van. You're like, Denny, hit me up. Hit me up, Denny. <laughs> His name's Denny, too. Yeah, that's... Like the Grand Slam, the from Grand earlier. Slam, everything Denny's is coming, coming around. Back, to you. baby, call All the back. Sports stuff. Call back, call back. She also tweeted this. Get this. Uh, Myself and our children deserve better than what you have given. I cannot believe I ever thought that someone like you could change because you cannot. You have a long road ahead of you, and one I graciously no longer will be a part of. Have a great life, Denny. No, Hammer. no, she did not <laughs> yeah, tweet. Yeah. Have a great life to her baby daddy. <laughs> yes, yeah, she did. That's insane. <laughs> Multiple that's, babies, by the way. That's a phone call conversation. That's right. a have a great life is is a text message. That's not a tweet. And it this goes, is in your diary. <laughs> and it's like no wonder you didn't marry this lady. You know what I mean? Like they've been together for like a for a bunch of years. I they have he multiple lives kids. in fear of this woman. Or he's just like, yeah, she's insane. Like he's probably got together with her before he had super super wealth, and now he's like stuck with her because she knows all where all the bodies are buried <laughs> you know yeah but it is an exhausting thing so i mean something to keep your eye on out there what's going on with denny and jordan nobody seems to know uh it's not like a ben zobrist situation we had this guy ben zobrist this poor cuck who played for the chicago cubs and uh poor his cuck. career he put on hold because his wife thought that he wasn't spending enough time with their family and they he put his it, career on hold. Right, because she started having a wandering eye for their pastor. So he knew about this. They decided to work on their marriage. He took left baseball to work on their marriage. And then she divorced him, got together with the pastor, sued Ben Zobris because he ruined his career. And that was like money that she would have gotten. Had she, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. That girl's a bitch. Super bitch. What's her name? I forget what her name was. Do you remember Kirsten? Not cool. Something Zobris. I forget what her first name Not was. Not cool. Not cool at all. And, she fucked the pastor? And she put out uh, church albums and stuff, like a bunch of, and, and Ben Zobris paid for those. Her name is uh, Juliana Zobris. Interesting. Oh, this was Jordan. Jordan, not Juliana. And like, what's that conversation? Hey, baby, I just need to sit down and talk with you. Um, your baseball's affecting my life negatively, <laughs> and I'm fantasizing about the pastor. So, can you just come home and never leave my side? Like, what and is that? And then sue him for the baseball not doing it. It's fucked up. It is fucked up. Now, one more baseball man that I want you to All learn right. about is Trevor Bauer. Do you know anything about this guy? No. Trevor Bauer's never going to play baseball again. Do you want to know why? Yes, I do. He beat the shit out of a woman. Okay. To come, basically. To because come? they were having like crazy violent sex. Did she want that? She said she did, but not to the level of which oh, Trevor shit. Bauer <laughs> provided. Bauer went a little too far. Exactly. Because there's text messages back and forth, and she's like, give me all the pain, daddy. And he's like, I'm going to fucking give it to you. Oh, no. <laughs> See, that's why I don't want an athlete. <laughs> yeah, well, I think, I wonder if that has something to do with it, but basically this article has been updated to say that, like, uh, there's no, like, decision that's been made by the DA or anything as far as charges. They don't really know what to do because she was kind of, like, it was kind of like a regret thing, and he still beat the shit out of her. He should, like, have faced some sort of, she had welts and bruises, and, like, he choked her with her hair and shit, like. He choked her with her hair? Yeah. How do you even... Do that. It's long <laughs> enough to just get it and like, I don't know. Ben, uh, uh, Trevor Bauer figured it out. But I'm sorry, like if you're asking for that. Well, like so there was multiple up, like, incidents beat me, too. Daddy, and then he does. Like, what yeah. did you do? Well, I mean, that's the thing. That's where it puts everyone's brain in a pretzel. Is and so far, the law, word? there has to be a safe word. Also, like help. Trevor Bauer's just kind of a fucking idiot. Like, I've had women who are like choke me, and I'm always like, 
you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It doesn't really mean like I'm not like I'm me. going to make you breathe your last breath. You're like you want to get choked. It doesn't mean like when they yeah, like slap yeah, yeah, me, no, he's, been... he's like fucking closed fist beating the shit up. So it's like he took it obviously very much too far. But I wish there was like a video so we could analyze it. Of course, right? Because and then the text a... messages people have analyzed ad nauseum, gone back and forth, and been like, "Here she is." At... But like, how much are you really? You're asking for it to a degree. You know what I mean? Like, right? But yeah. But but again, you know, he took it as like she's like, "Beat the shit out of me, daddy," and he was like, "Okay," <laughs> you know. You can't say that to a baseball player. I not this one, not this particular one, because <laughs> he went and there was multiple incidents That's that she's going after him for. So multiple times where he choked her almost to death with yeah. her hair. I think he like put her face on a toilet one time too, like crazy shit. But like, um, just <laughs> insane That's stuff. That's crazy. But so he's never probably like the whole new update is he's certainly never going to play for the Dodgers again, and he's probably never going to play Major League Baseball again, That's no matter what happens up. here. And so we'll see. I mean, he's the type of guy, by the way, he feels vindicated in his actions that because she was asking for it, for lack of a better word, uh, that he felt like he was in the right. And it was like something that maybe went a little too far, but wasn't something that was like not consensual. That's what I think. Right. So I don't know how it's going to all play out. I mean, I would out. like to see like how tore up this she was. She was pretty fucked up. Can like, we Google image this? Like I think we can. If she has like a black eye. No, and, yeah, like, it's bad. And like br- a lot of bruises and that. Just say different. I don't even know what her name is, but see if like Trevor Bauer victim appears. The word victim's not great. Oh shit! I mean, he beat the shit out of her. Oh, I wasn't expecting it to be this bad. This kind of changes it for me. I think that's the thing. Like, that's really like, I think that's what would change it for a jury also. Like, Yeah, if they were that's, to... that's really bad. I thought it was going to be like, oh, she has a little bruise. It's like, <laughs> no, this girl got her beat. She got her ass kicked. And it was like, again, the text messages are. Beat me. Yeah. So you're like, well, what is she doing if she knew this was the degree in which he took it? But, uh, but it's know. also like, was she trying to do this? Like, cut. Is this like a lawsuit? Like your words, not mine. I can't say that as a cisgendered white man. Well, as like a <laughs> cisgendered white woman, I can. You're like <laughs> I'm thinking about doing this actually, <laughs> because it goes my cum, someone else's cum. <laughs> yeah. Piss. No. Human piss. Human non dehydrated piss. Non dehydrated human piss. Dehydrated. Dehydrated human piss. piss. Cat, Cat piss. piss. Shit. Shit. Blood. Blood. Okay. You heard it here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again for coming and doing the show. By oh the way, oh my gosh, I had the best time. It Thanks was such a blast always you. to see you. And um, I like I would like to get this podcast in a place where I can get my guest as fucked up as you got get me when I come on your show because okay. we can't like smoke on the air here, unfortunately. Yeah. Rules in the building and such. <laughs> But do tell, again, where everyone can find you and all that. You can find me at Princess Shank on Instagram and Twitter. That's Princess, like normal, and then another S-H-E-N-K. I am going to be performing all over L.A. I post my show dates on Instagram. I'll be in Texas in November for Skank Fest and at, in Austin, Creek and Cave, and September 29th, American Comedy Co. headlining with Kimberly Congdon. Come out. Support live comedy. Thank you for having me. Oh, any time. And we'll have you back because we're going to figure out um, who wins the, the old game. Chase is going I'm going to have down. a prize. I'm going to have a prize. I can't wait. I can't it's think of a prize like that a, both of you would enjoy. A Probably golden just money. roach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do want to get a trophy. A golden cockroach I'm going to get a trophy made. Yes, that's an interesting. Yeah. I like that. We're going to have a trophy. But also a prize. Um, but... Thank you so much for joining us again for another episode of the Josh Potter Show. And uh, pleased to be coming out to the shows on the road. One more time, we've got a show tomorrow night. Zany's in Nashville. Cannot wait. Uh, also, the end of the month, September 30th, going to be at the DC Improv. And then on Thanksgiving weekend, I will be home in Buffalo, New York at Helium Comedy Club. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all jammed out five shows. So come on out. Josh Potter. Uh, or excuse me, Josh underscore Potter on Instagram, at J underscore Potter on Twitter. That's where you can find links to all the tickets. And you can find me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Josh underscore Potter as well. Other than that, thank you so much for subscribing. 
please rate, review, subscribe some more. Uh, if you haven't subscribed on YouTube yet, get on that. Click the little bell. Other than that, we will see you next Tuesday on The Josh Potter Show. Thank you.